Mabuhay! It's time to react to the word. Good job, Lulu! <laughs> All right, geography now. Philippines. We're finally getting to the Philippines. It's probably one of the most requested geography now episodes. The question here that I have, Lulu, uh -huh. is just how much of this do you oh even know? Oh my god, don't even ask me. <laughs> Because we're going to find out how true of a Filipino you are, no, if is... you studied in school or not. <laughs> Maybe that, that one right there, not the first one. It's more of what I learned from school, did it retain, right? <laughs> and away, away, ago. If you don't know anything about Asia, the Philippines is like the jolliest of them all. They're just happy, fun, jolly people. Jolly! And you know what? <laughs> it's been three years. I'm not taking this anymore. I've been pushed around, I've been threatened, I've been thrown in the dungeon, I've been the butt of all the jokes. I'm the Filipino one. This is my time. My time! Ah! <laughs> what the hell? <coughs> Welcome to the Philippines. My turn. Okay. It's time to learn geography now! Hey everyone, I'm Ken, and as you know, I'm half Filipino. Years ago, I was looking for a job and I saw this ad asking for a motion graphics animator on Craigslist. Paul and I literally met up at a Jollibee for my interview. He said I was his top three candidates. In reality, there were only three candidates that applied, so technically I didn't lie, but yeah, the other two people kind of sucked, so yeah. Oh, and back then, I had this weird mustache and Paul's hair was basically this thing. Ken and I have been talking for a long time and we agreed Ken definitely has to be in this episode. You've come so far from that Craigslist Craigslist Jollibee interview, you've heard this. <laughs> Thanks. Handana, Maximula. 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 The Philippines is an interesting country because there's sort of a dichotomy between labels. If you ask a Filipino if they consider themselves Asian or Pacific Islanders, you might get contrasting answers. What do you consider yourself, Ken? Eh, I always thought Pacific Islanders sounded kind of cool, so I usually stuck with that. Ah. So first of all, the Philippines is a tropical archipelago of over 7,000 islands, about 2,000 of which are inhabited, and it is the largest island nation without any land borders or shared island territory with another nation. The country is located in Southeast Asia, straddling the Philippine Sea in the north, the South China Sea in the west, and the Sulu and celibacy in the south. Just to skip away lies the island of Borneo, which is split amongst three nations at the I'm closest point like, only about 22 miles or 40 kilometers away from the nearest <laughs> island that belongs to the Philippines. Now in general, many people will refer to one of the three main island cluster regions that people are a part of. There are Luzon in the north, where you can find the capital <laughs> yeah, Manila that. and where the half of the population lives, Visaya in the center, and Mindanao in the south. Otherwise, the nation is made up of 17 regions, one of which is autonomous, the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region of Muslim Mindanao. This place has a high level of self rule and autonomy appointed by the government. We'll explain more about this later. If you want to be absolutely technical, Quezon City, a bit north of Manila, is the largest city in the Philippines. However, the surrounding 16 towns and cities by Manila are called Manila Metro, or the National Capital Region. And they basically act as one unit. Otherwise, the largest city outside of the NCR the are Davao City in Mindanao. Mm -hmm. We're hometown, baby. Besides. Manila has the largest and busiest airport, Ninoy Aquino International Airport, which is basically the hub that services the entire NCR. They also have the busiest shipping port at the Port of Manila. Otherwise, the second largest airport is Cebu Mactan International, and rounding out for third place is Davao City Francisco Bangoy International. There's nothing in that airport. <laughs> it's, like a, it's barely an airport. We well, never know. Maybe it's um, different now. Finally, the Philippines has only two territorial disputes, the state of Sabah in Malaysia on North Borneo, a territory once had been part of the Sultanate of Sulu, a Muslim state that existed the 15th century to the 20th century, and that's a whole other story. As for the other dispute, as we mentioned quite a few times already, this whole area known as the Spratly Islands is a complete mess. If you don't know anything about this place, it basically goes like this. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. This is the map showing what everyone claims in the area. This big one right here is China's. Like, yeah, they just kind of pretty much went for all of it. This has even led to a few skirmishes between nations that have built patrol stations on the island. And when they spot a ship that gets too close, things can get kind of ugly. It's kind of like uh, this. Hey, 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 what are you doing? This is my area. I'm just doing some fishing and research here, you know? Why do you have a shovel then? Are you b building something? Or? Well, technically there's no land protruding from this reef, so uh, there's no land claim. So you're just gonna build your own land? For research. Anyway, anyway, here are some notable spots of interest. China. Magellan's cross. China's always up to something sneaky. 
Orlando Shrine, Cebu's Philippine Taoist Temple, Shrine of Mama Mary in Tagaytay, the Lapu Lapu Shrine, Luneta Park, MacArthur Landing Site, Bunawi Rice Terraces, Ooh. the Malacanang Palace. Vigan has many historical and colonial buildings, the various national museums of history and arts, tons of amusement parks, and that's not even including all the natural wonders of the Philippines. They have an underground river, the most amazing, beautiful beaches in the universe, hills that look like lumps of chocolate, and there's an island in a lake, in an island, in a lake, in an island. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you have 7,000 tropical islands on a volcanic archipelago, chances are things can get pretty crazy landscape-wise. Which brings us to... The actual physical land of the Philippines is the biggest treasure you will find here for sure. Anyway, the Philippines lies on the Ring of Fire and is specifically on a tectonic plate named after them, the Philippine Plate. And about 95% of the land is made up of the 11 largest islands. The country was essentially formed through the tectonic activity between the Philippine, Manila, and the Mindanao Trenches. The Mindanao being the second deepest in the world. It's interesting, when you see the ocean line, you can see how the land is pushed up and how the Philippines is just along that Ring of Fire Chunk of land. The most famous and picturesque of these include these three. See this island here, Kamiguin? It actually has more volcanoes than towns on it. Seven versus five, making it the place with the most number of volcanoes per square kilometer in the world. In fact, the tallest peak in the Philippines is a potentially active volcano, Mount Apo, located in the South I've Mindanao there. area. I the country has numerous mountain ranges and highlands. Don't piss that off dip the mountain the guys, valleys, Lulu. The largest in my blow. The Sierra Range in the North Luzon area, hooking into the Sierra Madre Range on the east side, which which feeds the longest river of the country, the Cagayan, that flows into the Cagayan Valley. This valley, along with the central Luzon Valley, are the largest arable croplands and produce nearly all of the rice in the Philippines. The Visayas are known for growing the most sugarcane, whereas Mindanao specializes heavy in coconut and fruit production. Back in Luzon, though, you can find the largest lake in the country, Lake Laguna Dabay, which is actually in the caldera of a dormant volcano. The lake has a weird detached island called Talim and is actually drained by the Pasig River that flows through the capital, Manila. And finally, the country is the heart of typhoon territory. They can <laughs> yes. come at almost yeah. any time of the year. Ain't the nation the will truth. experience on average about 20 of the turbulent storms annually which often flood to their many river systems. But yeah, if anything, Filipinos are the most cyclone adapted <laughs> people on earth. They're used to it. The water has always been kind of their That's thing. That's so true, yeah. man. Sailing, they just kind of go on with life even though... <laughs> Otherwise, the Philippines is one of the 17 mega diverse nations on earth. They actually have the largest level of marine biodiversity in the world within their waters and the highest rate of animal discovery on the planet with 16 new mammal species that were discovered in the past decade yeah. alone. Economically speaking, the Philippines is considered a newly industrialized nation. It is transitioning out of becoming an agricultural based system to a service and manufacturing based one. They have like three of the top 10 largest malls on earth. Ooh, just you wait, I'm taking the top spot soon. They're one of the fastest growing economies in Asia, and as the 34th largest economy in the world, their GDP purchasing power parity has surpassed the $2 trillion mark. Basically, the Philippines is definitely becoming a key power player in the world stage. It's like, <laughs> we're, we're so rich, <laughs> wealth and prosperity. <laughs> Someday. <laughs> For what it's worth though, mining, fishing, and agriculture are strong industries as well. They are currently the world's largest nickel and abaca or manila hemp producers, and the second largest coconut Oh my producer. god. Oh, poor horse. Poor Give that horse a break. Employing over three million people. And now, food. Now in the My Philippines, every region has their own specialty and culinary strange. Yeah, every dish looks like a fairy exploded. <laughs> Lots of dishes you can eat so and kamai, or eat with your hands. Yeah, pretty much everything has rice, and then you're gonna get a lot of grease and salt and vinegar and a lot of like, I don't care if that looks like it goes there or not, I'm still gonna eat it anyway. Right, Ken? Yeah, that's it's, Filipino food. Yeah. There's really no official national dish, but three meals that are well known for are adobo, lumpia, and sinigang. And in the non-Muslim parts, lechon is a yeah, huge I'm dish. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't mention lechon like Tagalog steak. Tinola, pancit luglug, kare kare, sixty, tapsilo, balut, yeah. kinilao. And my hey, I never tried kinilao before. What is that? Kinilao? Oh. Oh. I actually got this at Jollibee. If you don't know what Jollibee is, it's like the most popular fast food chain in the Philippines. It's like if McDonald's and KFC adopted a Filipino baby <laughs> and they even added spaghetti to their menu for some reason. Otherwise, Filipinos are dessert experts. They love their ube, ube everything, ube ice cream, <laughs> ube bread, ube pie, ube cakes. Oh, they also have like sapin, sapin, and cassava cakes. Those are the best desserts in my opinion. They also have Halo Halo, Leche Flat, Turon, Buko Pandan, and Puto. What you call me? If you're either Latin American or Spanish, you may notice some of those foods are also found in Latin cuisines. And there's yeah. a reason for that. <laughs> yeah, let's, we'll explain that in... 
Now, only in the Philippines can you find people that have Spanish names, speak English, celebrate an Austronesian culture, and cook Chinese. General MacArthur once said, That's give me a thousand Filipino soldiers and I will call. conquer Diverse. the world. Yeah, for some reason, Filipinos are like the best friends of Asia. Filipinos still have the best attitudes and smiles. They even give time off felony sentences if the prisoners volunteer to take part in a Michael Jackson dance performance to the public. Ah, uh, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. First, the graph. The country is about 110 million people and is the eighth most populated oh, country in cow. Asia and the 12th most populated country in the world. There are about 175 ethno-linguistic people groups in the Philippines, the majority of whose languages are Austronesian. Of these groups, the largest ones are the Tagalog at about 28%, 13% are Cebuano, 9% are Ilocano, and 8% are Bisaya. The rest are made up of other groups plus a small minority of non-native citizens, mostly Asians and Americans. It's important to note though that the Philippines has about 10.2 million people overseas worldwide. It is one of the largest diaspora populations spanning over 100 countries. The U.S. alone has about 4 million. I mean, they were were at one point colonized by million? the U.S., so go figure. They use the Filipino peso as their currency, they use the types A, B, and C plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Oh, and keep in mind the word Pinoy is synonymous with something that is Filipino. You might see that used a lot. Now back to the ethnic groups thing. Since there are over 175 of them, you would think, how do they all communicate? Well, the Philippines has two official languages. English, which makes them the fifth most English-speaking nation on Earth, and Filipino, which is the standardized version of Tagalog. The Philippine Tagalog language spoken today is a very different from pure or Tagalog. It actually has about 14% Spanish, 10% Malay, and 7% English mixed into it with a slew of other borrowed loan words. You can see the influence in words like pintelador, guapo, zapatos, and familia. Often, Filipinos will substitute familia. an F oh, with a P. Oh, that's just familia. Or a V with a P. High five with minimal consonants. Yay! <laughs> oh, and fun fact, Ken taught me this. Uh, in Tagalog, you can actually say an entire conversation just using the syllable ba. For example, <laughs> ba, ba, ba. Well, that was fun. Otherwise, in the Visayas and Mindanao area, Cebuano is a common language, as well as the other regional tongues like Waray and Daboano. They even have the only Spanish-based Creole in Asia, Chavacano, located in Zaboanga City. Now, the Philippines is unique in that over a past few centuries, they've gone through three periods that shaped their identity. Before European intervention, the Philippines has had a multitude of early civilizations that built kingdoms and dynasties like the Tondo, the Namayan, the Pangasinan, and the Sulu Sultanate. Many of these kingdoms had their you know own this? indigenous writing mm. system, such as the Babayan, Buhid, Eskayan, and Kulitan. Genetically, Filipinos are classified as belonging to the broader Austronesian people group, with their closest cousins being the Micronesians, like the I Mariana Islanders, Guam, Austronesian. and Palau. Although over the years, many people have mixed, and today it is speculated that somewhere around one-fifth or more of the population may have some kind of Chinese ancestry. After the Spanish came in, they adopted many of the customs, traditions, and cultural traits which have Spanish roots. Their own country is named after Spanish King Philip. The biggest trait though would be the fact that they are predominantly Catholic at about 81% of the population adhering to the faith. The rest are mostly Protestant with a small Muslim minority in the South Mindanao area. The Philippines is the largest Christian nation in Asia, fifth largest Christian nation on earth, and third largest Catholic nation after Brazil and Mexico. They have so many holidays and festivals devoted to Catholic themes like All Saints Day, Holy Week, and Easter, and of course the largest one, Christmas. The Philippines has the longest Christmas season out of anywhere else. Tell me okay, about so it. It's like months. <laughs> Once there's already burr, that's the beginning of Christmas celebration. For formal occasions, you may see Filipinos wearing traditional barongs for men and Maria Clara or Mestiza dresses for women. There are many other traditional costumes and customs for the other 170 ethnic groups. Too many to cover, but it goes everywhere from feathers, coconut fibers, hairdresses, tribal tattoos, and so on. Speaking of which, the Philippines dominates major international beauty mm -hmm. pageants with a grand total of 15 victories at the Miss Universe, Miss World, Miss International, and Miss Earth competitions. Basketball Miss and Philippines. boxing are the most popular sport by far. They have the oldest basketball league in Asia and the second oldest in the world after the United States, and come on, we all know Pacquiao. The Philippines is the leading nation to train and export nurses abroad. It's been said at one point, every Filipino has their should I just drop everything and become a nurse moment in their life crisis. <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> I've had those. And the word balikbayan means returner or returning family. It is used when someone comes back from expat work abroad. You might hear the honorific title of po or opal for elders, and a lot of people often raise the backs of the hands of their elders to their forehead as a sign of respect and say bless. In the Philippines, you have your 
your name and you have your Pinoy nickname and they get really weird and creative. Pepsi, Bing Bong, Jelly Boy, what Pinky, Bum Bum, and Earl. Every what? Filipino on every island and every what region can tell you Filipinos are obsessed with karaoke. The first karaoke <laughs> machine was actually patented by a Filipino, Roberto Del Rosario, even though some Japanese dude invented it, but he patented it. Obviously, that means music is a big deal in the Philippines. Besides taking modern cues from American pop, they also have traditional styles. Instruments include things like Gudyapi, Kilitang, Gimbal, Kubing, and Tongali. In addition, there are many different before. styles of dance, but the most famous one considered the national dance is Tinikling, a dance done between two pairs of perpendicular bamboo poles that are clapped together as percussion tools, and the dancers must weave their feet in and out in the spaces before getting hit or tripped. Now, on a bit of a more objective note, we do have to talk about some of the controversies. The Philippines is beautiful, but if you've been keeping up with current events, they do have their fair share of issues that have made headlines. We don't sugarcoat everything here. Human trafficking, whether in the sex industry, slavery, or organ smuggling, has been a problem in certain areas. And even though anti-trafficking acts have been passed by the government, enforcement has not always been on par. The drug trade has also been a major inconvenience for decades, affecting millions of people in the country. This has led to the new controversial laws instituted by President Duarte, which encouraged the public to seek bounty in exchange for hunting down drug pushers. Many have died in the process. And finally, you have the Moro conflict, an insurgency in the predominantly Muslim Mindanao region, which sought to take parts of Eastern Malaysia and break away through conflict. The fight has been going on for nearly half a century, and now it's just ending at the turn of the 21st century. Yeah, kind, kind of. of. For what it's worth, though, in the Philippines, everyone is family at the end. You don't have to be related to anyone to call someone ate or kuya. There's even a word, bayanihan, which means something like helping one another through community spirit without expecting anything in return. In any case, we gotta finish off this segment with history. Austronesians. Tribal kingdoms and sultanates. This guy came to the islands. Catholicism comes in. Lapu Lapu and Magellan dies in battle. Five Spanish dudes followed through. They finally become a colony of Spain. The galleon trade. British Philippines. And then back to Spain. The Treaty of Paris. Philippine Revolution. The Spanish-American War. First Philippine Republic. Philippine-American War. American occupation. Poor World Philippines. War II, Always being taken back. over Finally, by Philippine somebody. Ferdinand Marcos turned from president to dictator. Martial law. This guy gets killed because he was against the regime. People power revolution in 1986. Growth from agricultural society to an industrial one. And here we are today. Because of the long history in the Philippines being colonized by two major Western powerhouses, it would make sense that it would have ties with the outside world in many different ways. For friends, the Philippines is generally close with all the ASEAN nations and does great business with them, particularly Indonesia and Malaysia, their closest neighbors. The Marshall Islands, Palau, and the federal states of Micronesia are all cousin countries, many of which have Filipino migrants in them. And they all share the same history of being former U.S. territories and U.S. influenced states. Of course, Spain will always be in the back of their minds as the former colonizer that they gained much influence from. Although Filipinos are not considered Latino, the Spanish and many Latin Americans kind of see them as like the adopted Asians that totally fit in their family. It's like, come on, you're Catholic, you eat flan. Oh my God, now I'm interested to do a DNA test. I wonder if I'm 100% Filipino. I think the point is, there's no such thing as 100% <laughs> Filipino. <laughs> I think it says it here, right? <laughs> When it comes to their best friends, however, most Filipinos would probably say, even though colonial years were a little bit bumpy, ultimately the USA and South Korea. South Korea was one of their closest best friends from the 20th century mm. on. World War II really bonded with I them after the Japanese occupation years, and they supported each other diplomatically. Koreans are the top number one tourist demographic that visit the Philippines. Koreans kind of admire the fact that even though they were both influenced by the US, Filipinos speak better English, whereas Filipinos practically obsess over Korean products and media. Ah, oh, us. <laughs> That's why we <laughs> For the USA, ties were close ever since they became their colony in 1898. The US also had the largest number of overseas Filipinos at over 4 million, most of whom live on the West Coast states like Hawaii and California. They are one of the about... oldest Asian partners of the US. <laughs> they daily the daily <laughs> Treaty, And they are the largest export California. partner and second largest import after China. American pop culture dominates much of the youth influence. Hollywood studios love filming there. And Gallup polls have shown that the USA is favored on average by over 90% of the people <laughs> asked, making it one of the most pro-American countries on the planet. And Ken, you take the conclusion. In conclusion, if you enter a room full of Asians, you definitely know who the Filipinos are. While everyone's so uptight, we're the ones singing karaoke and somersaulting. You could just feel the energy of a Filipino. There's a touch of Latin flavor with American pop undertones. But in the end, no matter what island, you're immediately considered part of the Pinoy family. Ken, you're one of my best friends. I love you, man. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> 
That's good. Yeah, it's really cool that when they actually have a staff member who is of that nation. Right. And it really helps to kind of you know ingratiate I, and I have, think that's show the whole he purpose is, of him hiring different. I don't think he deliberately hires people really? from all over the world. He would have to hire like two hundred no, people well, from not, every single different oh, country. It just happens all. to be. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not like he hired them. Hey, by the way, I'm gonna be doing a Filipino episode. Stay tuned for three years, and we will do it because he does them alphabetically. So you know, now he's in the latter half of the uh, alphabet, but oh. it's nice to you know when people get to discover their own culture maybe you should do more of that too so you can learn about your own <laughs> culture Lulu. that's right i learned some from this video so good good review i like the summary right at the beginning which is basically the filipino people are some of the friendliest people in the world mm -hmm. but even after we fight by the next day <laughs> we still fight <laughs> <laughs> Yes, but you are usually yeah. smiles, while usually I'm the one who's still stern, like, mm, you could do better. That's a Chinese way. That's Chinese. 99% no, 100% <laughs>